Welcome to Epoch News, I'm Tatiana Darzi. In China, three high school students have died while exercising on school grounds, despite reports of the CCP virus resurfacing. One student died while running, and the other two died while running with their face mask on. Three students in three different high schools in China are reported to have died while exercising on school grounds, as many schools resume class despite reports of the virus resurfacing. The deaths happened during PE, when the students were running. One of them fainted and died while running, and the other two students died when running while wearing masks. According to China's state news media, there were more than three cases of students dying during gym class in the month of April. On April 14th, a 15-year-old student at Wenzhou No. 2 Experimental Middle School in China's coastal Zhejiang province suddenly fainted and died while attempting to complete a nearly mile-long run. On April 24th, Xiao Li, a junior at Caiyuan High School of Dancheng County in Henan Province, just north of Wuhan's Hubei Province, suddenly died while running with a mask on during gym class. Li's father suspects that his son died because he wore a mask while running. The school did not respond to the student's death and excluded the father from the class's parents' group on WeChat. And on April 30th, a student in Xiangjin Future Experimental School in Changsha City, Hunan Province, just south of Wuhan's Hubei Province, suddenly died while doing a running test of about a half a mile. Mr. Luo, a high school teacher, said that the communist government wanted to revive the economy during the pandemic, so it forced factories to reopen and schools to resume. In my opinion, students will be unhealthier after wearing the masks. I think if the students are healthy and there is no virus in the school, then there is no need for them to wear masks. It is uncomfortable for students to wear masks in class, and it is very suffocating to wear a mask for a long period of time. He said that students may not have had any exercise at home during the lockdown, so it's better to not require students to do heavy exercise to prevent any health issues. Dr. Zhao from a hospital in Beijing said that while oxygen inhalation decreases when one runs with a mask on, which could lead to hypoxia, it was unlikely to lead to something as severe as death. There is absolutely no need to wear masks while running. Strenuous exercises may cause irregular heartbeats, arrhythmia. Atrial fibrillation is deadly and can kill the person right away, and generally, this type of death is caused by heart problems. Dr. Zhao said that the virus circulating during this pandemic was invisible and mostly spread by asymptomatic people, leaving others defenseless. If you are afraid of being infected, then simply don't go back to work in schools. As early as the end of March, news had emerged that a mass group infection had occurred in schools in Guizhou province, southwest of Wuhan, where schools were the first to reopen in China. Reports said that around 200 students suffered fevers, abdominal pain, and other illnesses. In mid-April, news of infections in Pingdingshan Middle School in Henan Province were circulating online that four students were carried away by ambulance at midnight. On April 22nd, a school in Zhumadian City reported cases of infections and all students and staff members were sent to quarantine. The news indicated that there had been deaths. On April 24th, Online videos showed that Pucheng Xinhua School in Shanxi Province covered up cases of infected students, which led to many student deaths and parents holding banners outside the school demanding justice. At the same time, videos showed the parents of a diseased Pingyu Middle School student in Henan Province holding banners outside the school demanding justice. Several top House Republicans sent a letter to Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos asking for information on investments by the CCP in American colleges and universities to advance its overseas interests and promote propaganda. Top Republicans from seven different House committees have sent a letter to Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos asking for information about the Chinese Communist Party's investment in American colleges and universities to advance its overseas interests and promote its propaganda. The letter also details the CCP's efforts to suppress research into the origins of the CCP virus. Seven House Republicans, including Virginia Fox, ranking member of the House Committee on Education and Labor, Jim Jordan, ranking member of the House Committee on Oversight and Reform, and Michael McCow, ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, 
wrote in a letter on May 4th, Chinese efforts to silence academic research they disagree with are not new. China, CCP, has strategically invested in U.S. academia to attempt to steal confidential information and technology from U.S. companies and even the U.S. government. They also said in the letter, For some time, we have been concerned about the potential for the Chinese government to use its strategic investments to turn American college campuses into indoctrination platforms for American students. The letter refers to a 2018 Hoover Institution report, which notes the presence of some 110 Confucius Institutes on college campuses as well as over 500 Confucius classrooms in secondary schools. The report also points out that faculty and other watchdogs have warned that they may present risks to intellectual freedom by using American universities as vehicles through which to advance Chinese Communist Party propaganda, the letter said. The lawmakers question whether the U.S. higher education institutions that receive federal funding should be allowed to receive funds from China, the CCP, or other affiliated organizations. Ranking member Jim Jordan said, We cannot allow a dangerous communist regime to buy access to our institutions of higher education, plain and simple. A spokesperson of the Department of Education thanked lawmakers for their support, saying they looked forward to cooperating with Congress and federal agencies to ensure that colleges and universities comply with laws and regulations regarding receiving foreign funding. Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos expressed her concern over universities failing to report hundreds of millions of dollars in foreign gifts and contracts and has launched investigations into multiple universities. The Education Department has investigated the University of Texas system regarding its involvement with the Infectious Diseases Laboratory in Wuhan, China, the most likely source of the COVID-19 outbreak. According to the U.S. Department of Education, the UT system reported 10 contracts with Huawei and 24 contracts with Chinese state-owned universities between 2014 and 2019, totaling nearly $13 million. In their letter, the House Republican lawmakers request that the Department of Education disclose relevant information before May 11th. The Deputy National Service Advisor to the U.S., Matt Pottinger, delivered a speech in perfect Mandarin to talk about the relationship between the U.S. and China, about the civic-minded Chinese people, using the May 4th movement, and about Taiwan. This year marks the 101st anniversary of the May 4th movement, and Matt Pottinger, Deputy National Security Advisor of the United States, delivered a speech in perfect Mandarin to both talk about the relationship between the United States and China and about the civic-minded Chinese people using the May 4th movement. He pointed out that Dr. Li Wenliang, who first bravely revealed the CCP virus, is heir to the spirit of the May 4th movement. At the same time, Matt also praised Taiwan as living evidence of democracy and said China can be democratic as well. Matt Pottinger, Deputy National Security Advisor of the United States. To my mind, the heirs of May 4th are civic-minded citizens who commit small acts of bravery. Dr. Li Wenliang was such a person. Using perfect Mandarin, Pottinger named Dr. Li Wenliang as ophthalmologist who was not afraid of the Chinese Communist Party's suppression and was brave enough to reveal the truth about the epidemic. These heirs also include disappeared citizen journalists Chen Che Shi, Fang Bin, and Li Jiehua, who try to shed light on the outbreak in Wuhan, and the millions of Hong Kong citizens who peacefully demonstrated for the rule of law last year. When small acts of bravery are stamped out by governments, big acts of bravery follow. We have seen big acts of moral and physical courage recently. When a privileged few grow too remote and self-interested, populism is what pulls them back or pitches them overboard. It has a kinetic energy. On May 4th, a White House official talked about the May 4th movement that happened a century ago. Now, where is the heart of the May 4th movement? 
Pottinger also talked about the aspiration for democracy in the May 4th movement and quoted Hu Xu and the drafter of the Declaration of Human Rights, P.C. Chang. He even mentioned today's democratic Taiwan to repute the ideology of the CCP. The cliché, the Chinese people can't be trusted with democracy, was, as both P.C. Chang and Hu Xi knew, the most unpatriotic idea of all. Taiwan today is a living repudiation of that threadbare mistruth. He warned the Chinese Communist Party that suppression of freedom causes backlash of public opinion and believes that the May 4th movement belongs to the Chinese people. Thousands of garment factory owners and merchants in Guangzhou marched to demand government's intervention to reduce their rents after not having an income for three months. Police and firefighters arrived at the scene to block the road. The Zhongda Cloth Market in Haiju District, Guangzhou, is mainly a distribution center for various fabrics, yarn, and garments. Thousands of large and small factories gather nearby. For more than a decade, almost the entire 150,000 non-native population in this region have made a living by making clothes and processing accessories. When the business is good, their monthly income can exceed 10,000 yuan, 1,400 U.S. dollars. Last year, however, orders were greatly reduced in the aftermath of the Sino-U.S. trade war. In the beginning of the year, due to the CCP virus outbreak, the manufacturers lost all their business. On April 21st and 22nd, thousands of garment factory owners and merchants joined the march at the exit of the subway station near the market. They demanded government intervention to reduce their rents after they had no income for three months since February. Police cars arrived at the scene and policemen came to block the road. Conflicts continue to break out. The police put up barricades hand in hand and demanded for owners to stand against a wall before the police car arrived at the scene. Major cities in Heilongjiang have been placed under lockdown and many restaurants have had to shut down. The ones that remain open have few customers and for Heilongjiang residents, it's difficult to find a job because they're considered a high-risk group for the CCP virus. Major cities in Heilongjiang province can no longer hide the emergence of the second wave of the CCP virus. Harbin and Muranjiang both placed communities under lockdown. As a result, Restaurants have few customers and nearly half have already shut down. However, there are hardly any other job opportunities for these restaurant owners because Heilongjiang residents are considered a higher risk group for the CCP virus and they will be turned away if they try to seek jobs in other provinces. Mr. Bao is the owner of a restaurant in Mudanjiang. When did you resume operation this year? March 23rd. I heard that the coronavirus outbreak is particularly serious in Heilongjiang in cities such as Harbin and Mudanjiang. Does it have any impact on your restaurant? Huge impact on restaurant industry. Very few people come out to eat in restaurants. How much is the drop of your business income? Before the epidemic, our gross income was 2,000 to 3,000 yuan, 280 to 420 U.S. dollars every day. Now it is only 200 to 300 yuan, 28 dollars to 42 U.S. dollars. Do customers eat in your restaurant or do they mostly order takeout? Mostly takeout, but not many orders. I have asked all my employees to take a vacation to minimize our losses. Only my wife and I are here to handle takeout orders now to save cost. Do you need to pay rent for your restaurant? Yes, 60,000 yuan or 8,500 U.S. dollars a year. We are in an agricultural suburb. Generally, rents are very affordable, but my rent is higher than average. 
Are there any restaurants filing for bankruptcy or shutting down? Nearly half went out of business as they all operate at a loss. Many remain closed because the income cannot cover their costs such as wages and rent. Some have already quit the restaurant business and walked away from the lease. How could they pay rent if they don't have any income? What is your plan? Are you going to continue your restaurant business? We have to carry it on. There are no other job opportunities for people like us. Even though we are losing money every day, we try to live through this period of time. Is there any relief policy from the government? Any subsidies? No, presently there is no such policy. Is the city of Mudanjiang under lockdown? It is said that the situation in Mudanjiang is severe, as there are imported cases from Suifenghe. All I know is that other provinces would block entry to people from Heilongjiang. In Mudanjiang, we do not allow people from other areas to enter either. Mr. Liu is running a Korean barbecue in Lingko County of Mudanjiang. How is the epidemic affecting your restaurant business and your daily life? We did not resume the restaurant business this year. We are still staying at home. Is the epidemic very serious in Lingko? Yes. Every community is closed. Residents are not allowed to go out freely. I heard it is because there are confirmed cases in your area. We don't know the situation. Anyway, we are told to stay at home, and we are not allowed to reopen our business. When did this happen? Did you open your restaurant for some time before you stopped it? Local authorities ordered all restaurants to stop operating on April 23rd. What kind of restriction is imposed? Can you go out? The community guards allow us to go out every other day, but no one goes out every other day. If we are ordered to stay at home, we just stay indoors. That's okay. Then what are you going to do with your restaurant? All restaurants in Linko have basically stopped operating. The same goes for other industries. Now you have no income, but you still need to pay rent. Aren't you worried? How can I not be worried? But what can I do? No one dares to come out and eat. Everyone stays at home. How much is your loss every day? The main expense is rent, which is 40,000 yuan, 5,660 USD a year. We still have to pay it. It's a helpless situation. I think the first half of the year will be the worst for all of us. Everyone is staying at home in order to survive. No one dares to go out to work. Even if we want to go out to find a job, we Heilongjiang residents will be turned away by others. Heilongjiang's current situation is the same as people from Hubei. Employers in other regions will reject all job applicants from Heilongjiang. Ms. Huang is an employee of a private company. Did you mean your company owes you unpaid salaries? How much? 30,000 yuan. Is it one month's salary? No, over a long period of time, from May last year to this month. Every month I receive less salary than the regular amount. How many employees in your company are in the same situation? Quite a lot, more than 70 employees. And the money owed to us is more than 1 million yuan. Why did you continue working if the company stopped paying you since May? I get paid every month, but it's less than my rightful salary. I thought maybe the problem would be resolved sometime later, so I didn't start looking for a new job until several months ago. However, the outbreak of the epidemic disrupted my plan. Now I have to stay with this company. Is it because of lack of market demand? Our boss has several different businesses. He has a financial company in Beijing, which sells investment products. That company lost 100 million yuan last year. As a result, he cannot pay us salaries in this company. How is your financial situation now during the pandemic? I am behind in my mortgage payment. Actually, I am behind in all the payments. Do you plan to look for another job? What is your plan? Every company stops operation. No one is hiring. There are so many people looking for jobs now in our area. At present, it is impossible to find a job. The interview was conducted on April 29th by Gu Xiaohua of the Chinese language Epoch Times. 
Yesterday, President Trump met with the governor of Iowa, Kim Reynolds. Reynolds began by thanking President Trump, Vice President Pence, and the Coronavirus Task Force for their collaboration during the pandemic. Please, what yeah. would you like to say? Well, first of all, I appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate the opportunity to be here to personally say thank you to both you and the Vice President and your incredible team. Uh, the partnership and the collaboration as we've moved through this pandemic has been incredible. And uh, we've not only for the calls that we have weekly, the coordination between the governors to really you know, personally get on and ask if there's yeah. anything that we need uh, to help address the pandemic in our states. I appreciate that very much. Testing has been one of the areas that we are really leading on. So we know that that's critical for us to start to reopen Iowa. We have uh, through the test Iowa um, process, we have an assessment that Iowans can take and really monitor their own health that will help us identify where some of the hot spots or clusters might be. And then we have significantly increased our, te increased our testing capacity, so thank you. We've gone from 300 a day in March to 1,300 a day in April to almost 3,000 a day um, now, today, and we hope to increase that up to 5,000. It's really, wow. and it really is making a difference. And then on top of that, uh, we're doing really some robust um, case investigation and contact tracing, which has helped us identify kind of the scope of the virus activity so that we could be targeted in our approach and really help prevent it from uh, really spiking and spreading. Um, and so it helps us kind of contain and manage the virus as we move forward. President Trump spoke about the production of ventilators made in the U.S. and the exportation of these to other countries who are in bad shape and need the ventilators to save lives around the world. Ventilators right now under uh, development and al already in storage, as you know. We're stockpiling. We have over 10,000. We've sent them to states. The states are all, you, you have plenty of ventilators, right? Did yeah. you ever think that was possible? No. <laughs> they never wrote a story about it, Kim. No. No. And that's a tough one. We're at 85, 80 to 85 percent. That's not like a swab. That's not like a swab. That's a piece of cotton. This is a big deal doing a ventilator. So uh, countries know that we have tremendous uh, amount, tremendous volume, and they've been calling. Uh, Nigeria just called. We're giving them 250 ventilators. Uh, we have many countries, uh, I'd say 12, 14 countries are called. We're sending uh, quite a few to France. We're sending quite a few to Spain and Italy. Uh, and we have other countries. We have uh, four African countries, countries located in Africa, who are really in bad shape, frankly, very bad shape. And uh, we're sending them quite a few. So we're in a position where we can now help other people. Because basically, what are you talking about? You're talking about people dying. You know, it's not a question of countries. You're talking about a lot of people are dying. And we make a great ventilator, as you people found out. Your people actually told me the ventilator. You know, there are good ventilators and not so good. We go top of the line. We're making all top of the line. So uh, we're sending them to a lot of countries as they need them, and they they call. And are those donations? Will they have to be returned, or so can they we're keep working them? on that? And uh, in a certain way, I like them to be donations. I really do. I think it's goodwill. It's hard to say you have to pay us in order to save people from dying. And I'm the first one to say you got to pay, but, you know, this is uh, something that's a little bit different. I, I think it's something they really appreciate more than normally, like, you know, you're doing some trade for some linen or whatever it is. You, a ventilator will save lives. And they are really, some of these countries have none. Larry Kudlow knows. I mean, you know the kind of calls we've been getting. They're like desperation calls, because you can't make them. It takes you months and months to get them set. We did it in weeks. The people did an incredible job. An internal Chinese report warns that Beijing could face a global backlash over the CCP virus pandemic. According to people familiar with the internal Chinese report, it concludes that the global anti-CCP sentiment is at its highest and that it could tip relations with the U.S. into confrontation. China could face a rising wave of hostility in the wake of the coronavirus outbreak that could tip relations with the United States into confrontation. That's according to an internal Chinese report. Reuters has not seen the paper, but people familiar with it said it concludes that global anti-China sentiment is at its highest since the 1989 Tiananmen Square crackdown. 
Reuters couldn't determine to what extent the stark assessment reflects positions held by China's state leaders and to what extent, if at all, it would influence policy. But the presentation of the report shows how seriously Beijing takes the threat of a building backlash. Relations between China and the US were fraught before the outbreak with deepening mistrust and friction points from US allegations of unfair trade and technology practices to disputes over Hong Kong, Taiwan and contested territories in the South China Sea. US President Donald Trump is facing a tougher re-election campaign due to the economic destruction and massive US coronavirus death toll. And according to officials, the Trump administration is now turbocharging an initiative to remove global industrial supply chains from China as it weighs new tariffs to punish Beijing. Meanwhile, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has been adding to pressure on Beijing well, to morning, answer everyone. questions about where the new virus came from. He said on Sunday there was a significant amount of evidence that it emerged from a Chinese lab. Again, remember, this isn't the first time that we've had a virus come out of China. Reuters sources said the internal paper concluded that Washington views China's rise as an economic and national security threat and a challenge to Western democracies. The report also said the United States was aiming to undercut the ruling Communist Party by undermining public confidence. A spokesman for the U.S. National Security Council declined to comment. And the Office for the Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson said they had no relevant information regarding the report. The U.S. Department of Defense said Wednesday it signed a $126 million contract with industrial conglomerate 3M to produce 26 million face masks per month. 3M is expected to increase N95 mask production by at least 312 million masks annually within the next 12 months. Starbucks said it will open 85 percent of its stores by the end of the week. The company looks to adapt this business for safety during the pandemic. The company will enhance its mobile app and create a more cashless experience. The coffee chain closed around 8,000 of its stores in the U.S. in March. By June, the company hopes to reopen over 90 percent of its stores. CVS profits rise during the pandemic. CVS reported strong quarterly results as customers raced to its stores to stockpile medication and essentials during the CCP virus pandemic. First quarter profit rose 41 percent compared to the same quarter last year. Total revenues jumped more than 8 percent to $66.8 billion, and sales increased 8 percent. Uber is laying off thousands of its staffers. The company said Wednesday it's cutting about 4,000 full-time roles, about 14 percent of its staff. Uber's customer support and recruiting teams will be affected. The layoffs are in response to the reduced volume of ride requests and the company's hiring freeze. The following charts will show you the most recent numbers regarding the CCP virus pandemic. However, China and Iran are not included because their numbers are unverifiable. We've been mentioning the many losses in the world caused by the Chinese Communist Party's cover-up of the CCP virus. With over 3.5 million people infected, China is still defensive about independent international inquiry into the origin and spread of the CCP virus. The Epoch Times has initiated a global Sign the Petition campaign, calling for investigating, condemning and rejecting the CCP. We believe that investigating and exposing the truth is the only way that we can remain safe. Let's take action. Sign the petition at ccpvirustruth.com. That's all for today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this program with friends and family to keep them informed about the latest news and updates. Thank you for joining me. See you next time.